Video Fashion Models, Top Models of the World, is the ultimate model competition series. We're counting down 100 extraordinary catwalkers from every corner of the planet, from the land down under to the Far East, from sultry South America to the U.S. heartland. We're ranking each region's most stunning strutters. In this program, we're counting down gorgeous girls from the hottest continent on Earth, Africa. These sizzling stars add to the natural wonders of this magnificent region. Get to know Iman. Fashion is uh, my life and, you know, it's, it's where really gave me the name and uh, the opportunity. Candace. Victoria's Secret is about sexy, voluptuous, curvaceous woman. Uba. Rathorn. My face behind his name has created a whole new Uba. Georgie. I'm just doing my job. I love my job. Beati. The excitement backstage, like, the minute before the show is the best time. Oluchi. My dream one day is to be famous <laughs> and to be a supermodel. Leah. I'm so into it now, I can't like get out and just completely say no more. Alec. We do have a very strong voice in fashion and I think we could really use that for the best. Watch and find out which of these eight amazing African beauties is number one on our list. And you two can choose your favorite. And to kick off the countdown, at number eight, it's Uba Hassan. My name is Uba. I am from Canada, but original from Somalia. Rafforn has, I, I just, there's no word for it. I wish I can take my feeling and put it into words. My face behind his name has created a whole new Uba. Being a black model, as there are very few right now in the runway, it was just like next, next, next. Like you, you know, you take a subway, you get lost in a city, you get to the casting, people don't even look at your book, it's just next. And then you walk with Rafro and now everyone is stopped. Like, oh, this is a Rafro girl. I love to dance. I love to dance. I don't, I don't think I have any good resume, but uh, I love to dance. And if it's crowded, I would dance on a table. My family loves me very much, and they support me with everything. I'm pretty much one of their favorite girls. Because <laughs> I'm more, when I go home, I cook and clean and stay home. I'm a kind of little girl when I get home. Um, so they just support me. They want me to be happy. I work now into interviews and casting and see photographer with confidence you know, hi, I'm Uba, and like put my book there, and they will take time to look at it. Because my first picture, it's, it's my face with the rough horn in the back. It's, uh, he, uh, tremendous, tremendous. Um, and I, I'm very, very thankful, and I just, there's no word for it. Very thankful. At number seven, the charming Georgie Badiel. With her signature strut, sleek physique, and smoldering stare, Georgie Badiel is easy to spot and hard to forget. I grew up in Africa. I was born in Ivory Coast. I grew up there, and then after I'm going to Paris, I stayed there for a long time, and then I started modeling. It was my dream to be model, you know, so I was like, why not? I'm so excited for this fashion week because uh, all designers, they are so nice, they have amazing clothes. I love the makeup, the hair. It's, it's nice to present the clothes, to show the clothes, to wear nice clothes, to be elegant, to be chic, you know what I mean? Yeah. The self-assured beauty approaches the runway with a cool confidence. I just get cool, you know, like relax. I don't want to be nervous. It's if my job makes me nervous, I have to stop. It's not possible to continue because, you know, I want to feel good, I want to feel great. This season, I'm doing um, Diane Van Fersberg, um, Lacoste, Oscar de la Renta today, Halston, 
Uh, a lot of shows. After modeling, I want to be an uh, interior designer. Yeah. I love everything chic, everything nice, everything class. Yeah. I'm gonna begin next year my school of uh, interior designer. Georgie was more than prepared for the chaotic atmosphere backstage at Fashion Week. She had great practice growing up in a house full of siblings. I have ten brothers and sisters. Yeah, it's big family, you know, it's big families. They are so happy for me. At the beginning, my father was like, he don't want because uh, he says bad job, you know. <laughs> but right now, he's happy. He's happy because I'm doing well. My mother too, they are so happy. I love my body, I love me, I love everything on me. So, I'm just doing my job. I love my job. Coming in at number six, it's Sudanese sensation, Alek Wek. The more different people from different backgrounds, different cultures, we get involved in this business, the more fun it is. I started in London, I was discovered on a street fair, and I didn't take it serious at first. I was like, you know, you gotta be joking, and it was real. And then a year later, they um, took a Polaroid, and one of the bookers in New York was interested in me, just come and represent me and see how it goes. A native of Sudan, Alek Wek's world was about to change. Modeling doesn't really exist in Africa. It took a while before I got my papers together, but I came in the summer of 96 and I went to like 17 appointments a day for like a month and after like two months, Francois shot me and Steven for Italian Vogue and the rest is history. More than just a pretty face, Alec is also an artist. She turned her passion for drawing into an accessory business which honored her father. It started off because I always painted since I was young. Weck, of course, is my second name. I like Weck at the end. But um, 1933 is when my dad was born. And he passed away when I was 12. It's a celebration to me. So it's, that's why it's just 1933. His dream was to, for us, me and my nine brothers and sisters, to be able to go to school, get an education, and have an opportunity in life. A decade later, Alec is still a fixture on the international fashion circuit. We found Alec front row in Milan, where she was pitching in as a guest editor for Amica magazine. It's very nice to be invited as a guest editor with, you know, Amica. And I was like, that would be quite interesting, actually. Why not? And I've never really been on the other side since been modeling for 15 years. As time go by, I like to model in moderation now. Once in a while, do an appearance as well, get on the runway. She may have scaled back on her catwalk appearances, but Alec has plenty else to keep her busy. She's still working on her accessories line, and she's the cover girl for aid in her native Sudan. The humanitarian work, which is something that's very dear to my heart. I've been very active with UNHCR, United Nations High Commission for Refugees. And if I can be a little bit a part of helping to rebuild the community and so forth, that's what really is important. We do have a very strong voice in fashion, and I think we could really use that for the best. At number five, it's the vivacious Beati Prinslow. I'm opening the show. I'm really excited. Beati has been in nonstop demand ever since the fashion industry took notice of the 16-year-old Namibian beauty. I'm from Namibia, and um, I was in South Africa on holiday, and someone spotted me there, Sarah Dukas. And Sarah Dukas knows how to pick them. Having made fashion history when she spotted an unknown Kate Moss at the airport in the late 1980s, Beati is positioned to follow down that same legendary path. I never wanted to be a model, 
basically because I'm like in a small town, never really thought about it, you know, like, I mean, you see all the girls in the books and I mean, everyone wants to be there, but, um, but it didn't really cross my mind that I, you know, that's what I want to do someday. When the opportunity came, I just, I just thought maybe I should take it and see how it works. It's really nice, I love it. <laughs> the excitement backstage, like the minute before the show is the best time. I do get nervous, you know, there's always a possibility you trip or you fall. Sometimes they, t they, they ask us, did you, see, did you see whoever in the front row? And I'm like, no, I didn't see anyone, I was just walking, you know? Like the minute when you're out there, you don't see anything else, you just... It blanks out. You don't hear the music, you just you just walk. It's it's incredible. I wanted to study like first the der dermatologist and then uh, this and then uh, that. So it was it wasn't really like, you know, I know what I want to do. It was always like um I don't want to sit in like a office and you know I want to travel and when the opportunity came it was really nice. playing sports hockey it's girls hockey on a field it is violent it is pretty violent so I, when I started modeling I was a bit more careful and now well now it's you know I don't have time anymore so it's like but I love it it's really nice but it is violent though I'm traveling so you know a lot like seeing so many different places that you never see that I would have never seen you know if I didn't do modeling. It's really, I'm really grateful and thankful for that because I mean, you can see the world and I was so young coming here and you just have to stand on your own feet. You have to do everything for yourself. You know, there's no mom or dad and you have to make your own decisions. So, I mean, I think, I think through the whole process, you just get like more, you get stronger, you know, and you know yourself so much better. Ranking at number four is the gorgeous Aluchi. Alluring and sophisticated, Aluchi is a Nigerian-born beauty who's been winning fans the world over from the moment she burst onto the fashion scene. Her rise to modeling began after she was named the Face of Africa in 1998. I entered and it was about 500 contestants and I, I was just lucky enough, I think. Luck and determination brought Aluchi to New York, where she landed her first modeling assignment, shooting with famed photographer Stephen Mizell for Vogue magazine. I never knew him. I came all the way from Africa. It was really great, they were encouraging. After a triumphant start, Aluchi moved to New York, even though her family was a little bit nervous. My parents, they're all happy about it, but sometimes they're somehow scared of me coming to New York City, but well, I promise them I'm going to be fine. <laughs> we first got a look at Aluchi in 1999, when Video Fashion tagged along to her meeting at Jane Magazine. My dream one day is to be famous <laughs> and to be a supermodel. That was then. Now, numerous magazines and hundreds of runways later, it's Aluchi's long legs and exotic features which have led her across the world. She is celebrated from New York to Paris, and in 2006, Aluchi once again landed in the coveted Sports Illustrated magazine swimsuit issue. We followed Aluchi to their launch party. A preview copy of the magazine was waiting for her. This is so nice! Wow! This is your second time in the issue, right? This is my second year doing Sport Illustrated. This is the biggest thing that's ever happened to America. <laughs> this is so nice! Is this me? That is you. No way! I didn't know they make the girl work you work your ass off <laughs> on set. You know, three days you get up at six in the morning, you have to be there on time, and they take so many pictures. Hello. 
I like doing Spot Illustrated because it just gets a wider audience as opposed to doing any other fashion magazine. I just want to make this, like show this in Africa to encourage younger women saying you can do it so they have someone to look up to. Landing at number three, Victoria's Secret stunner, Candace Swanepoel. Hi, I'm Candace Swanepoel. I'm really excited to be here in Milan. Discovered in a South African flea market at the age of 15, it wasn't long till this blonde bombshell capitalized on her angelic looks. In 2010, Candace's career got wings when she signed on with Victoria's Secret. Well, it's a totally different vibe. You know, Victoria's Secret is about sexy, voluptuous, curvaceous woman. I love that look. Doing the shows again, it's I kind of it's it's refreshing for me to do again. Um, yeah, I'm excited for the week. I'm wearing a dress with the red stockings. It's very um, kind of Scottish influenced, um, with a high collar. Gives you a strong backbone. We'll see. What, what goes on in the week. After a hectic week in Milan, we caught up with Candace again backstage in Paris, where the blue-eyed beauty was seeing red. Yes, here we are in Paris, backstage Victor and Rolf. I am loving it. It's super dramatic, as is Victor and Rolf. The clothes are amazing. Um, it's going to be a very extravagant show. You know, they, Victor and Rolf take it to a whole nother level with, um, you know, the, the silhouettes that they give. Um, it makes us feel really strong, very powerful. The music for the show is super dramatic. It's just a, a fun show to be a part of and for the girls to enjoy getting into character. Despite her sizzling career and packed calendar, Candace hasn't let success go to her head. She keeps a cool exterior and appreciates all the opportunities her job allows. It's a nice change for me. It's beautiful here in Paris and um, I've, I've been lucky to do some really nice shows. It's, it's exciting for me. Securing the number two spot is the extraordinary Leah Cabetti. With her striking looks and poised manner, Ethiopian beauty Leah Cabetti has become one of fashion's most sought after models. She has garnered some of the most prestigious campaigns in the industry. It's been really, really good. I've been very busy. Leah doesn't dwell on the details of how she started modeling. Oh. <laughs> It's a long story. I'm from Ethiopia. I used to model there. So we used to have like shows there. It was really fun. Totally different from here. You know, we're like the only models in the country kind of thing. So we had a blast. I'm married and I have a child. <laughs> I love going home. It's so much nicer when there's somebody there and there's a baby and it's so sweet. But it's crazy, especially if you have to travel so much, it gets really hectic and you know, nerve-wracking when you don't see them enough, but I, I'm trying to manage. Now a mother of two, Leah is more than just managing. She not only graced the cover of Paris Vogue, but it was the first time in the magazine's history that it devoted most of its editorial to one model. It's good, I like it very much. I have a bunch of favorite designers. A lot, I mean, everybody. I like Marc Jacobs, I like Balenciaga, I like, you know, YSL. I like so many things, especially now. Everybody's coming up with so many good things. It's hard to pick. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna do modeling until, you know, until D-Day, I don't know. And then, see, maybe acting seems nice sometimes, or if not, you know, I wanna do something in the fashion business. It's really interesting. I'm so into it now, I can't like get out and just completely say no more.
Clinching our top spot at number one is the legendary Iman. At the 2010 CFDA Awards, the Fashion Icon Award was bestowed on supermodel and successful entrepreneur Iman. David Bowie, Iman's rock star husband for more than two decades, was there in support of his eternally elegant wife. Oh, it feels great. I, I keep on saying it's really good for the ego. You know, I'm 55 years old. I've been in the business almost over 30 years. And so to get this at this stage in my life is just really great. A native of Somalia, Iman started modeling in 1976 after being discovered by photographer Peter Beard. Video Fashion spoke to her about the early days of her career back in 1984. Yes, actually very well. My third day in New York, I did a, a Holston show. It was my first show and my last for four years. I didn't touch shows because I was so scared. And he had these three rooms that were all filled with mirrors. And um, so my main worry first were two things. Uh, the mirrors, you know, to walk into them. And high heels, because I never wore heels before in my life. So I, uh, I walk into one room, do a little turnaround as I could, wobbling. <laughs> Got to the second room, <laughs> didn't know. Got to the third room, my turn, and I thought there was a fourth room, and bang, into a mirror. <laughs> so there it was, you know. <laughs> then for four years, I, I said, no way, I can't do shows. Mm -hmm. And just did print, 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 and, um, and then one time, a friend of mine just argued with me about the print girls don't know how to do shows because, you know, it needs pizzazz, it needs stage presence. And I said, no, we could, you know, any print girls could do it. He said, no. So he betted money with me. And I said, well, okay, actually, let's even make it better. Um, I'll bet you I can do the, one of the biggest shows in New York. And that woman's where the other one is not going to only write about the design, but they're going to write about how well I did. He said, okay, fine. It was my first Calvin Klein show, and they sure did write about me. Uh -huh. <laughs> Her success as a model gave rise to a new career as a businesswoman. She launched Iman Cosmetics in 1994, and as of 2012, it is a $25 million a year business. In fashion, you know, it's really fast and furious. Um, but, you know, I've also been a businesswoman. I've been a CEO of my own company, Iman Cosmetics for all this time, but as I said, uh, you know, fashion is, uh, is my life and, you know, is, is where really gave me the name and uh, the opportunity and all that and extraordinary amount of people I've met in this business that have been kind and generous and extraordinary talent that have really brought the talent out of me. So yeah, it's a, it's a collaborative effort. Fashion is definitely a collaborative effort.